Hello and welcome to another STEM in the Box instructional video. Today what we'll be looking at is some classroom tips for project-based learning using Scratch 2 offline. Now what we'll be covering today is some fairly a basic list of uh, tips that help uh, deliver project-based learning. So the first thing is to collect, set clear tasks, some, to provide some exemplars. You need to scaffold appropriately obviously, uh, especially for differentiated learners. We need to get the kids to think algorithmically or step by step, um, break that problem down for them. And that's basically creating an algorithm. It's useful to use the small stage layout to focus on the code when you need to so they can see it better. Um, you will need to get them to learn the stage coordinate geometry system because that underpins all of the movements. Using comments is extremely useful and important. Uh, both for you and the students and creating template files to give to the students is a very good idea as is collecting assessment via sub them submitting the files um, themselves because they can put lots of annotations and codes and explanations everything that you really need to assess can be uh, put into the uh, scratch file itself okay so let's get started so what task would I like to set? Well, I'm thinking a really basic um, maths problem. Let's say we're doing area in maths and I just simply want them to draw a rectangle. So Scratch doesn't have units as such like centimetres or millimetres. It's just steps. That's it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is use the right click add comment and I'm going to use this to write a task sheet. So the task is going to be uh, rectangular area Excellent. So I could save this as a template file. I'm going to save it as a rectangular area task. And so that means you could put that on your common network drive and then it's pretty obvious really the students can then open that and it's got the task sheet in there already okay great so that's just what we did before all right so now all the students got this in front of them if when you're up to that okay so now I'm going to run through an example so this could be direct instruction of how we're going to uh, do this so the first thing is that I'm going to use the hundred by hundred steps it's asking me to get the grid backdrop so I'm going to select on the backdrops there and go and get the grid the XY grid it's the very last one um, just there excellent so you can see here that the X coordinates negative 240 to positive 240 it's left to right and then up and down negative 180 to positive 180 so the origin is at the middle which is 0 0 so that's just standard Cartesian geometry with your four quadrants you don't want to use negative numbers that's fine then you can make sure that you set the task as I will be so that they're working in the positive uh, quadrant up here where X and Y remains positive for extension kids or an extension uh, task you could say I want you to work in uh, the negative negative quadrant you know I want you to work in this quadrant down here or something like that you know so that adds a level of difficulty um, which you could set as an extension to this same task okay so that's uh, check one we've got the XY grid now let's do 100 by 100 so the I'm going to start my algorithm first thing is I'm going to um, shrink the sprite a little bit because it's a little bit too big 
So just going to shrink it like that. Now the first thing is I'm going to put the sprite at the origin, which is uh, x and y equals zero. Okay. So what you can see is that when I do a code snippet, if I click on that code snippet, it will actually execute that code. Um, so that's why the sprite is moving back to the to the origin. So that's that's the first thing. Now step two is put the pen down. So I'm going to put the pen down. So the pen is now down. So now it's just some 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 moves. So go back to motion. So you could use if you wanted it to jump straight away, you could use um, move. Uh, you could use change by or you could use glide. I'm going to use glide because it's there's an educational reason because you're putting both the x and the y coordinate in at the both at the same time. It, it helps kids keep keep an idea of what both coordinates are every time. Whereas when you when you use the move and the change. Um, they have to keep that in their head, so it's like one step removed. So it's a little bit more um, <clears throat> concrete. Okay, so we want to go straight up, which will be Y100. Now, we might also put a bit of a delay in there so that it doesn't, um, when it gets to each corner, it just waits at each corner. So if you go into into um, control. I'm just going to wait one second. Now you can do a really handy shortcut here. You you can right click and duplicate. And what that's going to do is it duplicates um, any code that is underneath, well, from where your mouse mouse cursor is underneath. It'll duplicate that, and then you left click and and, and snap it in. Okay, so we're just going to change these coordinates. So now. We want to then go right, so we're going to go to um, x equals 100, y 100. So I'm going to duplicate that again. So now we're going to go down. So going down will be x will be going from 100 to 0. So we're going to change that. So now we're in the bottom right hand corner of the square, and now we want to go back to the origin. So that's easy. Okay. So and then after that we want to put the pen up. Okay, so we go to pen and then we go pen up. Alright. So let's just try that code. So if I click on it. Oh no, I've made a mistake. Okay. Great. So now what we're doing is evaluating. I've made a mistake. I'm testing my code. I've made a mistake. So it didn't go down, so that was the it got to the the second coordinate. So and oh I see. Yes. So X needed to stay one hundred there and Y needed to go to zero. My mistake. And the other thing is the line's really thin, so I'm not happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the look of the line. So I'm going to set the color to maybe uh, pink so that I can see it a little bit better. I'm just going to snap it inside there. And I'm also going to um, change the pen size. Um, and I'm going to make it much thicker. I'm going to make it 5. So let's test that code snippet now. Okay, that looks better. Alrighty. Now maybe at the end of that, what I need to do is um, I don't need to do anything. So that's that's basically what I ask them to do. Now, if I want to put that in a loop, um, I well, I don't have to put it in a loop, but if I want to go and put it in a so that it starts when I press um, the green button there, the flag, then that's what I can do. Now, what I'm going to have to do at the end is also See how the pink triangle, the pink rectangle is still there. I'm going to have to erase that. So if I go into pen and then just clear it, I might wait um, wait a couple of seconds. All right, I might wait three seconds, and then I'm going to clear it. 
Oh no, I think what would be best would be, yeah, I'm just going to clear it. Okay, let's try that. So, so what would be better would be to clear it in the beginning, wouldn't it? Okay, so I'm going to put it up there. So let's try that now. So you see how it's cleared in the beginning? So using trial and error and evaluation is important. Great, so that looks good. So that's essentially the sea level response. That's just exactly what I asked them to do. So another option might be um, any, any two numbers that multiply together to give a, to, to, together to give uh, ten thousand will, will be sufficient. Now the other thing that they could do is um, annotate the algorithm in the in the animation itself. So how would I do that? Well, if we say start at the beginning here when you go to the origin, then we're just going to get the cat to say what's going on. So if we go to looks, then I'm going to um, Now I'm not going to need the wait because the when I say something it's going to take that time. So I'm going to say now at now at origin. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Ah, I made a mistake. It's not at the origin at all. I just put it in the wrong place. So I'm going to click that. So when I'm clicking it, it's when it's glowy, the code is executing. So I just click it again, it doesn't go glowy. So I just need to move that um, here like that, and I need to pop it um, before the glide command. Okay, so let's check check that again now. Now at the origin, yes, great, excellent. So all we need to do now is we can just use the the say command instead of the wait command all the way through okay so that's going to be that and that's going to be in there Oh, looks like I've made a mistake again. All right, I need to put that one in there. Good. So all we're going to do is put the coordinates. I'm going to get rid of now at. I'm just going to go coordinates. This is a typical way to represent coordinates would be brackets and then x comma y. So that's going to be x uh, zero and then comma one hundred, okay. And that's going to be one hundred, one hundred, and that's going to be. 100 and 0 for y and now this one's going to be I'm just going to say back at the origin and then after that I might say um, I can duplicate that after that I might say Ten thousand steps square um, okay we don't need the weight three at the end now okay so let's try that
Okay, great. So that's basically um, the task sheet done. I've basically illustrated a, a sea level response and a higher level BRA response by the sea level being just where they've written the algorithm step by step there as as notes only. Um, a B level response and above might be where they've also, in addition to that, have put it in the animation itself. Okay. Now, the other way that is very useful, well, not very useful, important to get them is to put the annotations directly attached to the code blocks itself and their thinking. Okay. So I go right click here and then add comments. So why do I have to clear there? Okay. So that's to remove um, previous um, um, pen. Okay. Now this little triangle here is really helpful because it sort of shrinks it up there and then sticks it into there. So now what I'm going to do is right click here and go um, move to origin. Okay, so pen down is here. I'm going to start draw um, thick line. Okay, and oh no, I didn't want that. I'm going to add comment, and that's going to be move up 100 and so what you don't want to allow is them to use the same English words in their annotation or their comments so as as is in the in the in the block because what you look what it's a method for checking that they understand so having them to paraphrase what the block is so yes the block says glide one second to X 0 y 100 so they can't just write that in the annotation because that doesn't indicate that they understand anything so they need to use a different language so that's why I've, I've, I'm illustrating here move up 100 is exactly the same that's what the glide one second to x 0 y 100 does but it's in different language so that I know that they understand okay um, so likewise here that's going to be uh, move right 100 and then this one's going to be move down 100 and then this one is going to be move left 100 and then you know you're back at origin now okay so um, the annotations and explanations are basically how you can assess whether they they understand what's going on and you can you can you can see that they have the are getting the reasoning okay and um, you can say that look if you've if you've got those extra the, there so there's three ways to write the algorithm and explain what's going on and that's how you begin it going to be getting the b's and the c's is that you can demonstrate your understanding so you in 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 high school we call that um most subjects it's called your analytical thinking and communication okay great um so the the students could actually hand this in so they simply um save it and put their name on it um, so it might be you know Johnny B um, rectangular task and then they can save that to the common drive in the folder that you created and then you can sit down and quickly mark those and um, you've got uh, uh, evidence you've got a copy of the evidence uh, that can be printed out easily as well if you really need to, but most of the time you don't need to. You've, you've got the evidence there sitting in the folder and it's easy to mark. Great. Thanks, thanks so much for watching.